Everyone knows that rock stars tend to have reputations for living life on the edge, and sadly, over the years, many famous musicians died tragically young. Some, however, have died and come back. These are the musicians who died and were brought back to life. Queens of the Stone Age are one of the world's most successful post-grunge rock bands, having sold millions of albums and earned several Grammy nominations. Their breakthrough came with their 2002 album Songs for the Deaf and the global hit song No One Knows, which remains their only chart-topping single. Josh Homme founded the band in 1996 and has been the only consistent member ever since. And with that sort of classic rock star story, you might assume Homme's downfall came as part of the rock and roll lifestyle, but the truth is far more mundane. In fact, Hami suffered a surprisingly common affliction for musicians, knee problems. In 2010, the singer went into the hospital to have what should have been routine surgery on his knee. During the operation, however, Hami experienced complications with the anesthesia and choked on the oxygen tubes that had been placed down his throat. He flatlined on the table and was officially dead for a few minutes before his doctors revived him. Hami then had to deal with a MRSA infection, which is often so difficult to treat because MRSA is resistant to antibiotics. Understandably, the experience made Hami reflect on his life. As he told the BBC, it gave me great perspective and it's amazing to be alive. Yeah, you probably saw this one coming. Few musicians have embodied the rock star lifestyle quite like Ozzy Osbourne, from his superhuman consumption of illicit substances to his downright insane onstage antics. I, I think I'm invincible when I get loaded. I think I, I, whatever I do, is, is, it's okay because I'm me. But Ozzy's brush with death didn't actually have anything to do with the rock star life. In 2003, Ozzy was riding his all-terrain quad bike around his estate in Buckinghamshire, England, when he hit a pothole and lost control. He was thrown from the bike, and the bike landed on top of him. He fractured eight ribs and a vertebrae in his neck and even stopped breathing, losing his pulse for a minute and a half, meaning he was technically dead. His wife Sharon told reporters that a quick-acting security guard leapt into action and resuscitated Osborne, bringing him back to life so he could be taken to the hospital for emergency surgery. For more than a decade, Osborne lived with metal rods in his back as a result of the accident, until a fall in his home dislodged some of them, requiring yet another round of surgery. Slash embodies the classic rock and roll image. With his trademark top hat, dark glasses, and low-slung Gibson Les Paul guitar, he's instantly recognizable as the lead guitarist for Guns N' Roses, a band with quite the reputation for their own uniquely rock and roll lifestyle choices. So it's probably not too surprising that Slash is one of the musicians who has died and come back to life, or that his near-death experience involved a drug overdose. Usually, Slash is pretty nonchalant about his experience. According to his own account, he called up some drug dealers in San Francisco while on tour with Guns N' Roses. Slash told The Guardian, They had everything and I took all of it. He then started walking to the elevators and collapsed, luckily in the presence of a cleaner. Slash's heart stopped for eight long minutes as he lay on the floor of the hotel hallway. Paramedics arrived and injected adrenaline into his chest, and he was eventually revived. It took a few more years, but Slash finally got the message after he was diagnosed with heart disease at the age of 35 in 2001. He's been sober since 2005. The fact that Nikki Six is still going these days is something of a miracle. Now sober for nearly two decades, the Motley Crue bassist once said, Alcohol, acid, cocaine. They were just affairs. When I met heroin, it was true love. And these addictions very nearly killed him. In 1987, Motley Crue were riding high. They just released their second multi-platinum album in a row, Girls, 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 solidifying their status as one of the biggest rock bands in the world. So Six celebrated this success by overdosing on heroin so badly that his heart stopped for two whole minutes. An ambulance came, and not one but two adrenaline shots were required to literally kickstart his heart and bring him back to life. Was that the end of your drug use? I mean, it, it, that was the beginning of the end. It takes a while, and addiction is a really hard thing to, to kick. The incident inspired his song Kickstart My Heart on the band's 1989 album Dr. Feelgood. Interestingly, Steven Adler, the drummer for Guns N' Roses, was with Six that day and disputes the story. Adler claims that he revived Six after his overdose by dragging him into a cold shower and that no adrenaline was necessary. Whichever version of the story is true, one thing is certain, Six is lucky to be alive. Most people who briefly died and came back were adults, but not all. For example, James Brown came back from the dead before he was even 10 minutes old. Brown was born into an extremely poor family. When the time came for the delivery, there was no hospital or doctor. Instead, Brown was born in a small shack in Barnwell, South Carolina, attended by two aunts acting as midwives. At first, everyone thought Brown had emerged stillborn. His heart wasn't beating and he wasn't breathing. Brown's mother, Susie, began to weep, convinced that her son had lost his life in the womb. But his quick-acting Aunt Minnie revived the baby with some CPR, and he soon took his first breath. Considering how hard he had to work just to exist, it's little surprise that Brown became known as the hardest-working man in show business. 
Brown loved to tell the story, too, believing that his miraculous comeback from death marked him as special. And really, who could argue with the godfather of soul? Pantera are a legendary heavy metal band who dominated the music charts in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And songs like the all-time classic Walk made guitarist Dimebag Daryl and lead singer Phil Anselmo legends in their own right. But what fans didn't know as they were rocking out to the band's music is that Anselmo was suffering from serious pain due to ruptured discs in his spine. In fact, the first single from their album Far Beyond Driven, I'm Broken, was about Anselmo's excruciating pain, and his struggles with the feeling of vulnerability and weakness it inspired. To help him perform, Anselmo would self-medicate with alcohol, painkillers, and eventually heroin. His heroin led to an overdose while the band was on tour in 1996. Anselmo's heart stopped, and he was clinically dead for about five minutes. Amazingly, this wasn't the only time Anselmo had briefly died and come back. As Anselmo once explained, As a guy who's croaked a few times, I'll let you know straight up, there wasn't much there. And if there was, it ain't memorable. It was pretty peaceful from what I remember. As the lead singer for Depeche Mode, Dave Gahan has achieved worldwide fame and success, and his deep baritone makes for one of the most recognizable voices in modern music. Like many artists, however, Gahan struggled with fame. He became addicted to heroin and suffered so many overdoses that, reportedly, paramedics began referring to him as the Cat due to his apparent nine lives. But his true rock bottom came in 1996 when he overdosed yet again and briefly died. When he regained consciousness, he asked the paramedics if he'd overdosed again, and in response, they told him that he'd actually been dead for a few minutes. What probably saved his life was his arrest after the incident. Gone woke up handcuffed to his bed, with police already there to read him his rights as they arrested him for drug possession. He was sent to a rehabilitation center. Thanks in part to his fear of being sent to jail, he stuck to the year-long program. Gone is currently clean and sober. A legendary guitarist, songwriter, producer, and founder of Chic, Nile Rodgers has been a force in music since the early 1970s. Aside from his own success on the charts, he's worked with just about every major musician in the last four decades. But he also once had a serious substance abuse problem. The last time Rodgers drank alcohol or took drugs was in the mid-1990s. He attended a birthday party for Madonna and hung out with actor Robert Downey Jr. There, he indulged in cocaine and alcohol and allegedly died eight separate times in one night. Apparently, at one point, the doctors were filling out the paperwork to declare him dead when he started breathing again. Unsurprisingly, the incident scared Rogers straight. That night was the last time he took a drink or abused any sort of drug. But it wasn't the fear of death that did the trick. It was listening to himself playing guitar while under the influence. Rogers had thought his performance was incredible at the time, but hearing it back while sober made him incredibly embarrassed. He checked into rehab the next day, stayed there for eight months, and never looked back. The lead singer of industrial band Ministry has never been known for his restraint in, well, anything. From his aggressive approach to music and live performances to his epic drug use, Al Jorgensen has been one of the most unpredictable figures in rock music for decades. All of this makes it surprising that, when Jorgensen flatlined in an emergency room in 2010, it had nothing to do with drugs. In fact, Jorgensen had been vomiting blood for some time, but assumed it was nothing to worry about and simply ignored the problem. And until then, many fans thought his erratic onstage behavior was due to his alcoholism and drug use, but in fact, it may have been caused by his gastrointestinal problems. When Jorgensen collapsed and had a seizure, he was taken to the ICU, where he flatlined several times and had to be shocked back to life. Eventually, doctors found his stomach and intestines filled with ulcers, 13 in all. One of the ulcers in his stomach was located over an artery and had ruptured, briefly killing him. Understandably, the experience inspired Jorgensen to sober up and live a healthier lifestyle. He managed to kick his drug habit on his own, but in 2014, he entered an alcohol treatment program, admitting he needed a little help to dry out. The Giraffes aren't the most famous rock band out there, but this cult group has been active since 1996 and has a reputation for putting on electric, unpredictable live shows. Lead singer Aaron Lazar joined the band in 2001. Four years later, when he was 27 years old, Lazar was driving with his girlfriend one night when he suddenly slumped over the wheel, losing consciousness. When he regained consciousness, doctors told him that he died twice, his heart stopping each time. They eventually figured out that Lazar suffered from an event known as sudden cardiac death, which is responsible for half the heart disease deaths in the world. It's not quite a heart attack. The heart simply stops beating, and only 5% of people survive. Once they knew what they were dealing with, they implanted a defibrillator into Lazar. If his heart stops beating, the device will automatically send an electrical charge into the muscle to get it started again. Lazar has maintained a good sense of humor about his health. Once telling here in Nebraska he wasn't worried about dying on stage, he said, If I'm gonna have a heart attack, I'm gonna have a heart attack. I've had heart attacks watching television. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. 
Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.